is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. December the 10th, 1936, one of the most momentous days in the history of England. On this day, the decision of King Edward VIII was awaited with anxiety throughout the empire. From number 10, Sir John Simon and Mr. Walter Monckton left after consultation with Mr. Baldwin. At Fort Belvedere, where King Edward had spent this week of destiny, dispatch riders were constantly arriving from London. The hands of Big Ben approached the hour of climax, and our thoughts went out to Queen Mary, the King's mother. King Edward and his brothers left Fort Belvedere to listen to the wireless announcement of the proceedings in Parliament, which were to mark the closing stages of the reign. A last dispatch from Downing Street, and the Prime Minister left while crowds grew here and at Westminster to learn what might be the news, news that was feared to be of abdication. And at 3.45, the Prime Minister delivered this message from His Majesty, to be read by the Speaker to the House of Commons. After long and anxious consideration, I have determined to renounce the throne to which I succeeded on the death of my father. And I am now communicating this, my final and irrevocable decision. King Edward returned a king no longer, but through a tradition built up by many years in the past, the throne of Britain lives. For we know that the monarchy is the golden link of our empire, the crown our symbol of liberty. So we listen to the parting words of Edward, the son of King George and Queen Mary. This is Windsor Castle, His Royal Highness Prince Edward. A few hours ago, I discharged my last duty as King and Emperor. And now, that I have been succeeded by my brother, the Duke of York. My first words must be to declare my allegiance to him. Continuing, he said that his brother, with his long training in the public affairs of this country, and with his fine qualities, will be able to take my place forthwith. During these hard days, I have been comforted by Her Majesty, my mother, and by, her, by my family. The ministers of the Crown, and in particular Mr. Baldwin, the Prime Minister, have always treated me with full consideration. And now, we all have a new king. I wish him and you, his people, happiness and prosperity with all my heart. God bless you all. God save the king.
Queen Mother, in her message to the nation, said, I commend to you King George VI. I ask you to give him the same full measure of generous loyalty which you gave to my beloved husband. With him I commend my dear daughter-in-law, who will be his queen. I know that you have already taken her children to your hearts. It is my earnest prayer that the loyalty and unity of our land and empire may by God's blessing be maintained and strengthened. God, by whom kings and queens do reign, to bless the royal prince George the Sixth with long and happy years to reign over us. God save the king. King George the Sixth.